Hello, and welcome to another Make It video in our series at the Andy Warhol Museum. My name is June, and I am an artist educator here at the museum, excited to be talking with you all about stencil making. We will need a few materials for this process, and I will be showing you three different methods of this overarching idea. You can hopefully find many of these materials around the house, and I have selected a variety of wet and dry materials for us to explore. We have colored pencils, markers, paintbrushes, and watercolor, as well as scissors and an X-Acto knife for cutting. You will also need some materials to cut your stencil into and draw on, keeping in mind that you will need a thicker material if using watercolor, for example. Warhol kicks off his career in New York City as a commercial artist in the beginning of the 1950s. He used this experimental decade to try out new methods, allowing him to reproduce images quickly. Here enters the soup can and stencil making, which can also be considered foreshadowing his eventual discovery of screen printing. Warhol said of this process, the reason I'm painting this way is that I want to be a machine, and stencils fit right into this philosophy. There are many ways to make stencils, and like other methods of art making, they can be very simple shapes or more complex and abstract images, as you can see in these Warhol examples here. Don't be afraid to branch out and have fun with this process. Let's start out with a simple technique well suited for younger children. We have this thicker black paper to use, although cardstock would work just as well. Dry mediums are better to use with paper so we don't ruin the stencil. Fold the paper in half and draw on half of an image. It is better to start with a simple shape. Take your drawing material and sketch half of the image you intend to create. In this case, I am making a flower. This is reminiscent to me of snowflake activities. Now let's take our scissors and cut out the shape. When we unfold the image, we have a whole picture and can place this on our final paper. Make sure to secure your stencil somehow, such as with this tape so it will not move. Here we can fill in the negative space with the colors of our choosing. For the purpose of this example, I am using colored pencils. And here we have our new positive flower image. In this example, we want to explore the same simple idea further. This will involve tracing onto a transparent material such as Duralar, and also use of an X-Acto knife and a marker on the transparent paper. We can trace a picture of what we want to make onto our stencil with a marker. I'm using an image of one of Andy Warhol's soup stencils to trace and add an extra layer of fun. Once we have the image completely traced to our liking, we can begin to cut it out of the acetate always slicing away from ourselves. Once complete, our stencil is ready to be filled in. Wet mediums are fine to use on this material. I would recommend watercolors. Sometimes you won't have time for the creation of your own original stencil, or would just prefer to use a pre-made one. You can purchase a stencil book, such as this one, at an art store or online with plenty of examples to work from. I have selected a shoe today in the spirit of Andy Warhol. You'll want to use cardstock or watercolor paper, something thicker, as we will also be painting in this example. So take out your paintbrushes, watercolor, and water to wet the paint, and get to work. Thank you again for joining me on this stencil making journey and exploring some of Warhol's methods which remain relevant today. I hope you feel inspired to make your own stencils at home and experiment with different techniques just as Warhol did. And stay tuned for our next episode.